Good morning. Merry Christmas. Thank you. I'm so happy you're here. I'm happy to be here as well. Please stand. We're going to start our Christmas Eve service with some music. <clears throat>
much. Please take a second and say hello to someone around you. All right, let's continue our worship together.
Did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know? the 
You may be seated. Mary 
Now this is going to be very difficult to speak after this. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Valley View Alliance Church. My name is Pastor Moses, and I wish you a Merry Christmas. What? What? Merry Christmas, everybody. Well, thank you for coming today. It's always a privilege to present the Word of God on Sunday. Okay, I just have a few things I want to share with you very quick uh, before we start the Word of God today. Well, Merry Christmas, we'll cover this, right? Okay, the second thing, we don't have Bible studies during this time. Just check out the website if you would like to have more information. Okay, this is it. Well, children dismissed. Well, thank you again for coming. We're Valley Alliance Church. We're all about to bring people back to God. We, we hope to help people to get to know Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Uh, it's been a great privilege again to share the Word of God with you, and uh, we've been doing the, those uh, four subjects. Uh, we started with the subject of hope, and then we went to the subject of peace, and then to the subject of joy last week, and today we're going to look into the subject of love from the Word of God. So if you would like to open your Bible with me, and we have definitely everything going to be on the screen, but in case you would like to read your Bible, that will be great. Today we're looking into the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, and verses 26 through 38. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, and verses 26 through 38. The word of God from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 26 through 38, said in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin a place to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered, what kind of greeting this might be? But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and you will give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so that only the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. So again, today we, we are looking into the subject of love. That, again, that most churches um, every year do the same thing. They go to those really important subjects that uh, are, are important for every human being throughout history. And uh, today we're looking into the concept of love. And my, my question to you is, what is the definition of love? How would you define love? If I would hand you now a piece of paper, and a pen, and I say, well, write me down the definition of love. What would you write? That's good. That's good as well. Good word. I'm serious. Grab a piece of paper. Kidding, kidding, kidding. You were like, oh, man, is it a quiz or something today? Are we going to be graded? Okay, so what is the definition of love? It's interesting, isn't it? I mean, we looked into the concept of hope again throughout the Bible with Pastor Dave, and we looked into the concept of joy. We, we did as well the concept of peace. And those really are important terms that we always think about. They, they're always there in front of our eyes. And when we come to love, I, I just wonder, you know, when I started first looking into this passage, I was like, what is love? You know, what does it mean? I love my wife. I love my kids. Is this love? I love my neighbor, this love, you know, what, 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 what is it? So I will just have for us just a few things, just to, to kind of to, to, have, to, to give us a broad idea of what love might be. So what is the definition of love? 
And I looked into, like I said, let me check the American Psychological Association. They have really great things there, if you want to check them out, the APA. And I said, let me figure out what do they think about the concept of love from their standpoint. And I have come up with this, actually they have come up with this. They said it's a complex emotion, involves affection toward another individual, a sense of tenderness, sensitivity to their responses, experiencing a pleasure due to another individual. What do you think? It's not bad, isn't it? So, I mean, these guys are very smart. Okay, well, let's check another one. So I said, let me figure out another, uh, another discipline. And I went, uh, looked at the Sternberg Triangular Theory of Love. And he said, well, basically love is, is this kind of like triangle as you see, look at it. Uh, the top is the intimacy, which is, you know, close connected bonded between two people or uh, several individuals. But I would keep it between two people for the safety of today's ser sermon. The second one down to the, uh, the, the uh, left angle is passion drives that lead to physical attraction, uh, romance, sexual experience. And there's the other one, which commitment. And it, it's, it, they said like where you are on this, um, on, those, uh, on those triangles kind of defines your relationship or the concept of love or how, what do you think about love. And then I said, let me uh, check more things and I don't want to bore you with these things, but so I, I went to, to the chemistry. They, they think in, in terms of chemistry, especially in the body. And they, they said, well, the initial, the, the initial happy feelings of being in love is stimulated by three chemicals, which are found in the brain, okay? So I said, well, noradrenaline, that stimulates adrenaline, production causing that racing heart and sweaty palms. Have you felt this way before? Have you? <laughs> okay, we, we have the other one, and uh, we have the dopamine, which is the, the feel-good, you could find it at the pharmacy, by the way, the feel-good chemical, and then the phenylethylamin, which is that is, is said it's released when we're you know, crush, giving us butterflies and the tummies. Have you felt this before? I, I did. Interesting. Those are the chemicals. They said, well, this is kind of love on a, on a chemical way or in, 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 in chemistry terms. So I was like, that sounds good. I love them. There's also, if you would like to go to Google, by the way, or if you have encyclopedias, not a whole lot of people have encyclopedias anymore in their home. I still have, by the way, Britannica. You can try to look for the subject of love. It's very interesting, the things that you're going to hear about it. So I went to this. I said, well, love, what is the definition of love then according to the word of God, according to God, you know, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, for him, what love is? And I, I just have one word for us, actually, and it comes from seven words in the Bible. God, this is what, what we have in the Bible, God is <laughs> Very interesting, isn't it? I mean, just to compare it to uh, the chemistry standpoint or, or to the psychological sense, God is love. And let, let me just give you something from the Bible so we didn't accuse me going back, well, this pastor really doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, it said in, in uh, 1 John 4, 8, John said, whoever does not love does not know God. This is not what I want to say. But he said, because God is love. God is love. Now, let's take it to the Greek version. Again, I don't want you to go home saying, well, that's kind of the NIV version or the Bible, the English Bible or the standard one. But this is the Greek language. This is the original language that verse was uh, did come in. And it said, omi agapon, that agapon is love. Uk idun choi theon. Who, who does not know God or who does not love God? Uti is because... The one, O Theos, God, agape, is team. By the way, so interesting in Greek. It said, God, love is, not God is love, God, but that's the Greek language. But it is the agape, it's the, what we understand in English is the, is the unconditional love that God has for us. You know, there are four words in the Greek expresses love, but this is the, the, uh, the, the one that God speaks uh, using to speak to us, the agape, the unconditional love. There's the brotherly love, there's the, the love between husband and wife or between two intimate people, but this is the one really that is primarily came in the gospel to express the love of God that he has for us, agape. There are three words in Hebrews for love as well in the Old Testament. The, one of them is mahabdi, which is uh, the love that in general uh, we hear a lot about it. 
Also, we have chesed, which is more like the gracious love of God that he has granted to his people Israel. Uh, and then we have rachamim, which is more like the love of mercy. But we're going to focus on this kind of love that ha God has given to us, especially as we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And conditional love agape you. So let's see how this is going to be, how does this work? How does the, the love of God work today? And this is not really kind of the kind of sermon that you may expect to encompass everything about the love of God, but it's really, it gives us a kind, kind of like a good idea of the love of God to us. So let's look into the first few verses. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, which is kind of like a small town in Galilee. You've got a lot of Gentiles there. It's not really this kind of, it's not like Jerusalem, or it's not like Judea, the suburb uh, around Jerusalem. It's really not kind of, not the, the kind of town if you have a lot of money to move in, you know. It's just like a lot of Gentiles, there's a lot of things, but it's still religious some, somehow. Uh, and the, uh, il, um, we know about Mary, that she was a woman. She was or in, early in her teens, like probably 13, 14, 15 years old. And she was not really any significant. She's not even descended of David, by the way because Joseph was descended of David, and she was not even recognized. I mean, there, there's really not much for her, but yet she was virgin and blessed to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of, da of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And we look into this, and, and we compare it to the story that came earlier in the book of Luke, and we see that the angel Gabriel came to the, uh, the priest, Zechariah, which was a, 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 a Zechariah, a man who was born in Judea, he was located in Jerusalem, and at the time when God has chosen to speak to him, he was in the holy place. Actually, he was inside the temple. So you see, God loves evenly. You know, God doesn't just love this person or, or that person. God loved Mary, and he chose her to carry the, his son, Jesus Christ. Also, God loved Zechariah. He was a man again. He was a priest. Uh, he was in the temple. Uh, he was from the suburb of Jerusalem, and God chose him to be someone special. He said, I will give you a son. And he said, well, I, how, how is this going to work? God loves evenly and equally everyone on this planet Earth. Can I get amen for that? You think that God loves you? Interesting, isn't it? Interesting. Once I was in a cab with, and I had a conversation with the driver who was from a different religion. And um, he says, so wh what is it about this thing that you were in a Bible study? I said, it's about really the love of God to us. He said, oh, that's interesting. I said, D do you know that God loves you? And he was just completely silent. He said, I never heard in my entire life that actually God loves me. And then, you know, he got me to, 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 to my house and he didn't let me go. We sat there for an hour and a half. And he still charged me, by the way, for the cab. <laughs> I was like, how fair is this, you know? Should be free ride. But interesting, God loves me, and, and God loves you, but he loves everyone else, right? He loves my neighbors. He loves the Palestinians. He does love the Palestinians. He loves the Iranians. And he loves the Israelis. And he loves the American. He loves the black and the white the Chinese and the Japanese, and even the Germans. <laughs> I believe God loved Hitler. He did. But Hitler didn't really decide to love him back. So this is one of the things we see in the story, which we speak about those stories every year, and we see God has chosen Mary, and God has chosen Zechariah, very two different people. Paul, the apostle, Paul speaks later in his, and he said God loves the Gentiles and he, God loves the Jews, right? God loves everyone. And the question, I think, since God loves equally, and we have heard John, he said, if, if we love, then that means we are in God, because God is love. And if we believe God is our Lord and our Savior, he's the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the question, I, I guess, based on this, on what we know that God loves equally, do we love equally? The Apostle Paul said, if you love only those who love you, I don't think you have a great advantage in this, right? Because Jesus loved everyone equally and evenly. 
Whoever believes in him shall enter the kingdom of heaven, shall not perish. So do we love everyone as God does? Do we love equally today? I had a problem with loving people from Iran when I was growing up because we were in war with Iran. And growing up, again, I had just a, I can't really fathom the idea that I could respect or love the people of Iran. And I'm saying it openly. And, but when God changed my mind and changed my heart and changed my mindset, now I said, since God loved me and I don't deserve his love, I am a Gentile, way, way far away from the kingdom of God, then I ought to love the people of Iran, right? I ought to love everyone equally. And the Bible is saying, if we don't love, then there is a problem in our love to God. Since God is love, then we ought to love everyone equally. Amen? Shall we be this kind of church who loves everyone equally? I love my wife. Wow, really? Sure, she's my wife. It's not hard to love her, by the way. I love my kids. not really hard to tell me, oh, you got to love your kids. I do love my kids. But the question, do you love those who are different from you? Do you love those who are actually have a different world of you? Who, do you love those who may not actually love you? And what Jesus said, love those who cannot stand your faith. Pray for those who persecute you because that is the kind of love that God has given us through his son Jesus Christ. Can I get amen for that? The next one, God's love inspires, and we see the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And Mary was greatly, this is the word, was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. So what does that tell us about the love of God? Actually, it tells us that God's love really inspires awe in our hearts. Since I know that God loves me, I'm in awe of who God is and who God is. God is love. I'm encompassed in his love. I am cherished in his love. I am found in his love to me. It inspires awe. And the verse we have, she was greatly troubled. Not she was greatly troubled as seeing the angel like Zechariah. Zechariah was Greatly troubled because he saw the angel said, who? Who is this? Angel. She was troubled at hearing his words that she was highly favored. She was chosen. She was loved by God. And we know the definition for awe. It said it's a feeling of reverential respect mixed with fear or wonder. That's the kind of feeling that she had when she heard the words of the angel, that she was highly favored from God. Amen? So we, if you look at it, we're really always in awe of who God is, and God is love. Amen? And that inspires awe in our lives, and that also that inspires to love those who are around us. Right? Because if we are in God, then we have the same equality as God, the quality of love in our lives. That was something that inspired Mary and inspired Zechariah as well. And if we look further, that the God's love also is, is manifesting. It shows. It, it gets materialized. We say, you know how this is going to flesh out? That was the first word I, I learned in English when I was sitting in a meeting. And we had a big you know, vision to do this and do that and do a lot of things. And one of the questions came to the senior pastor who was passing that vision. How this is going to flesh out? And I said, flesh out? What does that mean? Flesh out? And it, that's the word, the flesh out. It becomes something. How this is going to work? And we see in verse 31, it said, You will conceive and you will give birth to a son. And you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. And these are the words he gave to her. Which means the, the love of God is not just a mere word that you could say to anybody. I love you. How about this? If I walk to you right now, I shake your hand, I say, I love you. 
and then there is nothing to really back it up, you get sick. I don't, you know, raise the phone and, 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 and ask about you. It doesn't really mean anything. But now with the word that the angel was saying to Mary, he said, you will conceive and you will give birth to a son. And you will call him Jesus. And if you look at it from this, from this standpoint, Jesus is going to be the manifestation of the love of God to me and to you. Sometimes just saying the word doesn't necessarily mean whole life, right? Though it's powerful, the word, I love you. But if there is nothing to it, added to it, it doesn't really make whole, it doesn't make really an impact, does it? So God does not just say, I love you, but he sent his son, Jesus, to die for you on the cross. Isn't that exciting? Because if that doesn't excite you, and the Super Bowl excites you, okay, I think then you have Super Bowl is love, and God, mm, like, really interesting, isn't it? Because the power of God and the love of God really inspires awe. And also, it, it manifests. And it's kind of really bring us down to our knees and, and, and ask us a question, how do you manifest today the love that you have for people in your life? What do you do to show this love? I love you, hon, but I'm not going to wash the dishes. I don't like washing dishes. But I do. Why? Because I love her, right? Did I, didn't do, did I do that yesterday, by the way? There was a plane. It took me a while. You love your children, and obviously you take care of your children, right? You raise them well, you, you buy them gifts, you send them to school. Sometimes even you discipline them. Why? Because you don't like them? No, because you love them. You want the best for them. You want to make sure they're going to have a good future. That's what love is, isn't it? Which I, I respect what you guys said, choice. That's one of the things. Commitment is another but that the love of God is manifested to us in his son. If God would say, I love you, but you have to figure it out, I don't think this is the kind of love that we expect. But God said, I love you, and here it is, my son Jesus is going to come down to earth, and he's going to take the cross and die on it to save you from your sin. That's the love of God. God loves equally. God's love inspires awe in our lives. God's love is manifesting. And also, God's love does the impossible. That, there was a good question, actually, Mary raised to the angel. I said, how will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? Makes sense, isn't it? I mean, I just love Mary for this. She's like, you know, you will conceive, you will give, a son, you will give birth to your son. He will be called the Most High. He will be called Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit. Will, I mean, all these things that were great, really. The angel already started with them. But she's like, wait a second. I'm a virgin. How does it going to work? Before you go, just I want to ask you. And he said, okay, I got gotcha. you. And he said, the angel answered. He said, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Well, this is great, isn't it? And he, now he gave her an example. He said, even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. He said, well, do you know about Zechariah? Do you know about his wife? Well, she was not supposed to have a child in this age. Neither Zechariah. But yet, God has given them a child. God has done the impossible because that's what love is. God has done the impossible. God's love does the impossible. We do things that are extraordinary for those whom we love, right? And this is what God has done for us. It said in, in John 3.16, God so much loved the world that he sent his only son, right? He, he loved so much that he decided to sacrifice his son for our sins. God has done the impossible to Mary. She was a virgin, yet she conceived and gave birth to a child. God has done the impossible in the life of Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth. When they were in age, in their old age, God has given them a child. That is the love of God. It does the impossible. And I wonder, what do we do today when, for those whom we love? 
Are we ready to do the impossible? Are we? Like God? And I have a story that was interesting the other day. There's a new movie. Anyone like movies here? Okay, I don't always really spend my time watching movies. Especially when I'm in my office, I'm working on the Word of God. I don't watch movies. But it was a new movie that is called Finest Time, and it is Tom Lee John. Anyone love Tom Lee, Tom Lee John? He's a great actor. I just love this guy. And Ben Foster. And in the story of this movie, basically both Tom Lee John and, and his son, Ben Foster, in the movie, father and son, they don't really have a great relationship. They've always been fighting. They, they, they live uh, in different parts. They have two different mindsets. And he's really old, Tom Lee John, in this movie. And his, his son was a, a fisher. He goes out in sea and he fishes and he sells that. And he got in a problem. He got a big fine from the town, $100,000. He didn't have money. So he, he, his friend told him to go to the cartel. And if you did one transaction to them, basically bring drugs to, and serve, they're going to give you $100,000. So he did, but in, 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 in his way to deliver the, the package, someone came and stole the drugs and the money. So he ended up with no drugs, no money. He went to the cartel. He said, well, I'm sorry. It's gone. It's stolen. He said, well, it's your, your life for it. You have only one day. If you don't get, deliver us the, the money and the drugs, you're gone. And this guy is like, oh, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. So his father hears about the, this d- dilemma that his, his son was in. And he decides, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of my son. He, he grabs his gun. He goes to the coffee shop. There are three guys from the cartel waiting for his son. He goes in, and you know how, how Tom Lee Jones does his movies. He goes in, he said, hey, I got the money, $15,000, take it. They said, no, we're not going to take it. We're going to kill him. We're going to kill your son. He grabs his gun. They're gone. I mean, he's really fast with his gun. You know, it's like, and they were like, out. Anyways, his son comes in. He finds him holding the gun in this coffee shop. And then, you know, police is coming as well. And you know what's going to happen to him. He's going to go to jail for the rest of his life. And his son, he, he looks at his father and says, Dad, why did you do that? Like, why, why did you do that? I could have taken care of this. And Tom Lee Jones, with a beautiful scene, he said, listen, from the moment when you become a father, from the moment you hold your son or your daughter, you knew that you're going to put down your life for their sake with no hesitation, with no second thought. God's love, likewise, does the impossible. Amen? I can never have a second thought to put for my three daughter if they needed it. It doesn't matter what it is. I would never have a second thought. <laughs> Neither to my wife, by the way. Love you, girl. We'll never hesitate because this is the kind of love that we have for our children. And it's the kind of love that God has for us. He sent his son Jesus to die for us on the cross so that we may have life. Amen? And it said in John 10, 10, life to the full. So today, as we celebrate Christmas, I know we're going to go home, and we're going to enjoy some time with family, and going to have dinner later, hopefully. I think we will. But you see, I think the most important thing is to really meditate. I was talking to a few people there in the, the lobby before sermon, and I said, the best thing for me is really to, to, to kind of sit on the Word of God and see what does it mean to me today, the love of God, the birth of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. And what that has done for me this year, I love those letters I see from people sometimes. You know, they tell me, like, what happened in this life, like this year, and, and what we expect to do. It's beautiful what God has done to you this year, how faithful God was to you this year, the things that he, he accomplished in your life. I would meditate and contemplate, think, God, what, what do you want me to do next? Which kind of brings us to, re, to really, really to the question, oh, I'm not going to sing, don't worry. <laughs> so what is your answer basically to the love of God what is it what do you have for him today what do you have later in the afternoon what do you want to say back to God and I just loved what Mary said she said I am the Lord's servant right that's what Mary answered and he said to him may your word to me be fulfilled then the angel left her can we say the same thing that Mary said to the angel God, what do you want me to do this year? 2024, right? It's just like a week, uh, you know, away. What do you want me to do? How do you want me to love my family? How do you want me to love my neighbor? 
How do you want me to love my community? How do you want me to love my coworkers? How do you want me to love my colleagues? God, show me. How can I bring the love that you have for me and present it to those who are around me? Amen? I have one more thing for us before we go to the worship. In 1 John 4 and uh, verses 17 to 11, I just love this idea that John presented, and I think it's really relevant for us today. And he, he, this is what he said in verse 7. If you want to go turn your Bible to that page, it's fine. If you don't, it's fine. I'm just going to read that for us. I said, dear friends, let's love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. And in verse 10, he said, This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete. Amen? Worship team, let's pray. Lord God, thank you for your goodness. And thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness, Lord God. Thank you for your love that you have shown us, Lord God, in Jesus Christ. You haven't just loved us. You haven't just said the word. But, Lord God, you have manifested it to us, Lord God. Jesus came to show us your commitment to us, Lord God. To show us your love to us, Lord God. He took our sins away. He forgiven our sins, and he gave us eternal life. Thank you, Lord God, for 2023. You've been faithful. You've been great, Lord God. Your love will never fail. Lord God, as we worship you, Lord God, as we look forward to 2024, Lord God, as we read the Bible, as we go to small groups, as we minister, as we serve, Lord God, help us to remember your love in our lives and help us to manifest it towards others. We trust you. We love you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand.
I want to send us off with a few words again from the word of God. That's on 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And this is what, Je- what the Apostle Paul said. He said, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It does not be proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight, delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Amen? May God be with you. Thank you so much for giving us the privilege to serve you today. Merry Christmas, everyone. Have a great afternoon. You are dismissed. Thank you.